that you can't count on millennials vote forever. They like you now because of social issues, but they're not really in the camp, the economic liberal camp. Looking ahead to 2016, you put Rand Paul's name out there specifically, you put Hillary Clinton out there specifically. Was there anyone else in the pile that, that we can sort of use to, to make some projections about, or is there anything we can extrapolate about what kind of candidate uh, is more likely to succeed with millennials going forward uh, based on those two names? Well, um, like I mentioned earlier, a majority of millennials say that they would vote for a socially liberal, fiscally conservative candidate. So if Republicans could perhaps shift a little bit to the center on social issues, they could perhaps put up a candidate who's fiscally conservative, fiscally responsible, and socially moderate and could win over these voters. For Democrats, they can put up a socially liberal candidate, but that candidate will also need to be a little bit more responsible when it comes to economic issues. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier, but we asked about was Chris Christie. Uh, millennials actually see themselves as closer to the New Jersey governor, who's a Republican, on economic issues, closer than they see themselves to Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama. But who are they voting for? They're voting for Hillary Clinton. And the reason is, is that social issues are what matter most to them right now. And Chris Christie just went through a really bad political scandal. Most millennials don't understand exactly what happened, but they know that his name is tainted. That doesn't mean that he can't still run for president and change his reputation, but it will be a problem for him. Is there any indication that if a Republican candidate went out very strongly against not just Barack Obama's foreign policy, but the whole kind of consensus foreign policy that we've seen, the parts of Bush's foreign policy that were carried through by Obama, that um, that, that kind of campaign would make social issues relatively less important for millennials? It's hard to say. Uh, foreign policy definitely matters, but social issues are the things that they deal with in their everyday lives. Uh, most, most young people have a friend who's gay, or they may be gay. Um, so those, the, the rights of those individuals matter a lot to them. We've had a lot more immigration to this country in recent years, and so people care a lot that their friends feel included in our political system and society. So, that, so social issues aren't, you know, it, it's about tolerance. Um, and yes, those things do tend to matter a bit more than what's happening in other parts of the world. It doesn't mean that foreign policy doesn't matter, but social, social issues are what's salient. salient. Okay, and if you had one piece of advice for, uh, for Democrats, um, presumably they're going to want to uh, embrace at least some of Barack Obama's legacy, if not all of it, uh, what would that advice be? Well, the advice would be this, that you can't count on millennials vote forever. They like you now because of social issues, but they're not really in the camp, the economic liberal camp. Um, they like what President Obama tried to do with the health care law. They, they appreciate that he tried to do something to improve the health care system. I don't know how that's going to play out. It might not be something that they want to glob onto as time goes on. But they're going to have to become more fiscally responsible as this generation gets older.